to do that. So thanks for the invitation to join in on this. So my name is Manrique Umaña. I'm an emergency physician from San Jose, Costa Rica in Central America. And I practice at a couple of hospitals in Costa Rica in one of the biggest public um, hospitals there. And also have a big interest in medical education and also in disruptive technologies like using social media for instance for medical education purposes yeah that's great so uh, we listen to you today it's a very important topic area management uh, in difficult situations and uh, we hope our medical students also uh, interested to know how they can manage the difficult areas in the future in their career uh, could you please actually summarize your talk uh, which is a very important talk today uh, for medical student level how you can summarize uh, the very important information inside of this sure so we usually are taught that a difficult airway that you can use for instance a mnemonic to to find if a patient has a difficult airway or not like using the lemon and mnemonic yeah, but that's more addressing the the, the anatomical part of the airway but there's also the physiological part. So there's a couple of physiologic changes that when you see a patient that has those, those um, are, those make the, the airway more difficult to manage. So the, the main points on the talk were that if you find a patient that is hypotensive, that is hypoxic, or that has an acidosis, they are a difficult physiologic airway. Uh, so that you need to address those three things before you intubate the patient. So the main point is you have to resuscitate before you intubate. So when you're doing, doing your RSI, uh, then on top of the list, as soon as you uh, prepare everything in the trauma room to intubate the patient, you should address those issues. And if the patient is, for instance, hypoxic, then you could uh, do the, a no desat setting where you put a nasal cannula and put the oxygen flow above 15 liters per minute. And over that, you can put a, a non rebreather mask also above 15 liters in, in of oxygen. And with that, and positioning the patient with the head up. And, you can improve pre-oxygenation before you intubate the patient. There's also pressure that you can give, so you can use a high uh, oxygen uh, nasal flow cannula, or you can use a CPAP, which is the continuous positive airway pressure device, over a nasal cannula, so you can provide not on only oxygen, but also pressure. Uh, or you can use the the valve mask mask device and put a peep valve on that uh, and over that the nasal cannula and you can do a two-person technique to hold the mask and you provide positive airway pressure also if the patient if the patient is hypotensive then you should address that the, and and it's the thing to do is just give some volume uh, to those patients but also you can um, address the medications you're using for the uh, rapid sequence intubation. So you want to lower the dose of the induction agent you choose and choose the one that it's, it produces the less hemodynamic compromise, like using ketamine, for instance. And usually, usually you would go up uh, with the paralytic dose of the medication you're using for that. 
So that's adjusting the medications you use in RSI. And also reach for pressors. So there's like two main techniques using what they call push those pressors, which is a double dilution of epinephrine. So you can give like small boluses so the patient blood, uh, the patient's blood pressure would just go up before you intubate them. And also use what they call an, a dirty epidrip, which is a liter of saline with an amp of epinephrine. And you just put the drip uh, and check the blood pressure again and again to see if the patient has a good enough pressure so that they can um, have the RSI done in the safest uh, fashion. And the other, the other one of those factors is acidosis. So the patient that is acidotic has a, a minute ventilation which is very uh, high. So if you intubate those patients, they might actually crash in front of you. So one of the things is, is that if they don't need like an airway right away, you can just hold them and improve their conditions. For instance, in a ketoacidotic patient, you can improve uh, his or her condition before you manage the airway. And if you have to do it, then it's, it's advised that you emulate what the patient is doing before the intubation. So if they have a high respiratory rate, then compensate for that when you do an RSI. Yeah, that's amazing, the summary. Uh, thank you very much for this important information. I think you know it will help a lot of medical students to understand how complex actually to deal with uh, in any AOA issue. Uh, thank you very much again. Okay.